Okay, the next part of this section is the law of cosines, which is another technique we're going to use for solving triangles. Um, the law of cosines is kind of like the law of sines, and why is this not centered right? Hang on just a second. There we go. Uh, it's used like the law of cosines to solve for missing side lengths in triangles and angles. Uh, the time you're going to use the law of cosines, oh, whoops, I was in pen mode apparently. The time you're going to use the law of cosines is when in your triangle, the given information, meaning the measurements that are actually given to you, are in side, 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 or side, angle, side arrangement. Um, side, side, side would be like this one right here on the right, where you're given the side lengths of 2, 6, and 5. So that is a side, side, side triangle, and we're looking for an angle. This one, uh, side, angle, side, means you are given two side lengths, like 6 and 3, and the angle between them. So that's your side, angle, side arrangement. And in this one over here, we're asked to find the third side length. So if you're given side, 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 or single angles that, or side, angle, side, then you're going to go into the law of cosines instead of the law of sines. Um, the law of sines will not work for these problems, so that's why we have to have a law of cosines. Now, unfortunately, the law of cosines is not as clean and easy as the law of sines. Um, here is how you do the law of cosines. Uh, you have all three side lengths and one of the three angles. And this is your formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And if you stop right there for just a second, and maybe this will help out a little bit, but if you look only at this part right here, hopefully that looks familiar. Uh, that is your Pythagorean theorem. So it starts off resembling the Pythagorean theorem, where c is the side opposite the angle. Um, however, since this is not a right triangle, uh, we have to continue. c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and then minus 2ab cosine of the angle. And when you're setting up the law of cosines, you do need to remember that c and theta, those are on opposite sides of the equation. They are also on opposite sides of the triangle. They are opposite each other in the triangle. So uh, just remember that the angle and the opposite side are on opposite sides of the equation as well. Uh, so let's use the law of cosines a couple of times, or three times, or four times, or heck, I don't know, we'll do this a hundred times, um, to solve for the variables in the, in the following triangles. So uh, looking at this one, we have a side, an angle, and a side. So this is a side-angle-side side arrangement. And when you're setting up the law of cosines, you need to remember that the angle is always on the opposite side of the equation as that third side. So when I'm setting this up, it's going to start off like Pythagorean theorem, except it's x squared is equal to, I have the hiccups here, x squared equals, and then 3 squared plus 8 squared, and then minus 2 times AB, which would be 8 and 3, 2 times 8, 2 times 3, and actually, I'm going to do 3 and 8, just to try to be consistent. So it was a squared plus b squared minus 2ab, and then the cosine of the angle, which in this case is 78 degrees. Um, and the nice thing about this one, when, you, when you're solving for a side length, is that all of the numbers are already on one side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to my calculator right now, and instead of punching this in piece by piece, I'm going to punch all of that into the calculator. So hang on, let me do that. There we go. So I punched in my calculator. And one thing you need to remember with the TI-89s is sometimes when you hit enter the first time, it gives you a silly answer like this that use some crazy identities. Uh, if you want the decimal answer, you hit the green diamond and enter. And that's how I got 63.020. And then what you need to remember is that's actually x squared equals that. So to finish solving this equation, I will take the square root of both sides of this equation. And when I take the square root of both sides, I get 7.934. And that would be our measurement for x. So x is 7.934. Um, and that's all you need to do for this problem. I'll, I'll only put one variable in there. You do just remember that that is x squared equals 63.020. 
and uh, then take the square root, and there's your answer for x. So there's one use of the law of cosines. Let's try another one. It's going to be a little bit trickier because on this problem, uh, I'm looking for an angle. I'm not looking for a side length, and that actually makes it a little bit tougher. Right here, what we have is three side lengths that are given, so it's a side, 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 meaning law of cosines will work. And when you set up law of cosines, you need to remember that the angle and its opposite side are on opposite sides of the equation. So that means when I set up this equation, 4 is going to be my C, and then for A and B, it's going to be 7 and 5, and it doesn't matter which one you call what. But uh, my formula is C squared, so 4 squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, 7 squared plus 5 squared, minus 2 times A times B, which is 7 and 5 times the cosine of the angle x. So this one we're, we need to solve for x. It's going to take a little bit more time because I have to isolate the x. And the first thing I'm going to do to isolate the x is to isolate the entire cosine part. So I want to hold this still and everything else gets moved over. Uh, so maybe what I will do, uh, let's do a little bit of arithmetic here. 4 squared I know is 16. 7 squared I know is 49. 5 squared is 25. Um, 2 times 7 times 5 is going to end up being 70 times the cosine of x. And right here you need to be careful because there's a place where a lot of people tend to make a mistake. Uh, what I'll do next, I'm going to combine my like terms that I can on the right side of the equation. And I can add 49 and 25. And 49 plus 25 ends up being 74. I hope so, I'm doing that in my head. Yeah, that's right. So those add to 74, and the rest of it doesn't change. So 74 minus 70 cosine of x uh, equals 16. And what you don't want to do is subtract 74 minus 70 because, if you remember your order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, Sarah, whatever you want to call it, PEMDAS. Uh, 70 is being multiplied by the cosine x, and multiplication occurs before addition or subtraction. So do not do 74 minus 70 because 70 is being multiplied. You can't do that. So what I'll do is subtract the 74. I'll move it over, and we get 16 minus 74, which is negative, whoops, which is negative 58 equals negative 70 cosine x. And then to finish solving for cosine, I will divide by negative 70. Divide by negative 70. These cancel. Uh, the two negatives cancel, so I'm going to write that as 58 over 70. And that does reduce, but I don't really care because I'm about to throw this in the calculator anyway. So I have 58 over 70 equals cosine x. Then finally, to solve for x, I need to separate x from the cosine. The only way you do that is to do the inverse cosine of 58 over 70. Uh, and so I'm going to do the inverse cosine of 58 over 70. And now here's something that I'm going to kind of look ahead of. I've, I've taught you to make sure your answer makes sense. x is opposite 4, and 4 is the smallest side in this triangle. Excuse me. X is a force. X or four is the smallest side. So I expect x to be a relatively small angle. So I'm going to punch this in the calculator real quick and see what I get for x. And there we go. I got 34.078 for x. X equals 34.078. Uh, that is degrees. And that makes a little bit of sense because 34 degrees is not very big in, in, in a triangle because all angles have to add up to 180. So I was expecting an acute angle, something small, and that's what I got. So 34.078 makes sense. It passes the smell test. All right, one more problem. Uh, here I gave you x, y, and z. There's three things we need to solve for. Um, and I look for the given information. <clears throat> I have an or a side, an angle, and a side, and the angle is between the two sides. So this is a side angle side, which means we will use the law of cosines. And remember, with, side, with law of cosines, the angle you're given and the side opposite that angle 
on opposite sides of the equation. So I'm actually going to need to solve for y before I solve for x or z. So let's set up and solve for y. Um, the whatever is opposite the angle, that's your c. The other two sides are a and b, and it doesn't matter which one is which. If you wanted to call 11a, it'll work just fine. Um, and then 23 is obviously the angle inside the cosine. So this will be c squared, which my c is actually y. y squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of 23 degrees. And we'll throw that in the calculator. And remember, that's what y squared equals. So let me throw that in the calculator real quick. Okay, so I punch that in, and I got y squared to be 28.242. And then don't forget that is y squared. So the last thing I need to do to solve for y is take the square root. And the square root of that answer is going to be, hang on just a second, is 5.314. So I get 5.314 for my side length of y. And um, I might need to use that later on. So 5.314, I'm not through with this problem. That's only one of the three variables. So what I will do is I'm going to store that in my calculator, and I'll just store it for, I don't know, I'll store it for A. I don't know why, but I usually start at A. Maybe I should store it for Y. It really doesn't matter. Just store it for something uh, so we can recall that exact value. So I get Y. Now I need to solve for X and Z. And there's a couple of different ways we could do this. <clears throat> and we have several options now. Uh, I have all three side lengths. And since I now have all three side lengths, I can use the law of cosines to get z or x. Um, something else we could do, uh, now that I have this side length, I actually have the ability to set up and solve using the law of sines. Uh, and I prefer the law of sines because it's just a little bit cleaner and you're less prone to mistakes in the law of sines. What I would ask you to do, though, is always solve for the smallest angle first when you have an option. So when using the law of sines, always solve for the smallest angle first, if possible. And I'm going to type that in here real quick. There we go. So when we're, when we're going to use the law of sines, if you have the option, solve for the smallest angle first. And the reason we do that <coughs> is because it eliminates the need to consider a second possible triangle, which is the only thing I don't like about the law of sines, is that pesky, ambiguous case where you have two triangles. Um, one of the benefits of the law of cosines is there's always one triangle. You will always get the right answer with the law of cosines. You don't have to worry about a second possible triangle. Um, so now that I'm diving into the law of sines to finish this problem, I'm going to have to think about that. But if I solve for the smaller angle first, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and looking at this, I have x and z. Uh, x looks larger, but remember, you don't want to go by looks. Um, the reason I know x is the larger angle is because it's opposite the longer side. So I'm actually going to solve for z first. I'm going to solve for the small angle first. Solve for the small angle first. So uh, when I solve for z, I will do sine of z over its opposite side, which is 7, equals, um, and then I'm going to have to do sine of 23 over its opposite side, 5.314. And I'm going to do this to solve for z. And I'm going to pause it while I solve this, because this is law of sines, which we've done a little bit of. I'm going to cross multiply and finish this thing. All right, there we go. So I solve for z. <coughs> and when I solve for z, I got uh, I cross multiplied. You ended up having to do the inverse sine. And I got 30.975 uh, for z. Uh, now, it was a law of sines problem, and I used it to find an angle. So if you want to think about the second possible answer, you could say z could be that, or 180 minus 30.975. But 180 minus 30 is going to be in the 150 degree range. And I know 150 degrees doesn't make sense for z, because z is opposite 7. 
Um, ooh, wait. 150 degrees. Okay, I just kind of stumbled over myself. Um, what's going to end up happening, uh, as of right now, 150 makes sense, but um, uh, on the surface. So 150 makes sense on the surface because 7 is larger than 5 and 150 is larger than 23. So it makes sense right now, but the problem is x has to be bigger than 150, which is impossible because all the angles would be too large. So 150 initially makes sense, but when I solve for x, uh, 150 isn't going to work because um, whatever is opposite my side length of 11 has to be a big angle, and I just don't have room for another big angle in this triangle. So 150 uh, actually is not going to end up working, and that's why I was saying solve for the small angle first, because if you solve for the small angle with the law of sines, if you solve for the acute angle, your first answer will be the right one, um, and so, let's see, now I've solved for Z, I have Y right here, um, and all I have left to solve for is X. And X is going to be kind of nice, because to solve for X, I'm simply going to subtract the other two angles from 180. Um, so I'll do 180 degrees minus the given angle of 23 minus that answer I just received in my calculator. And we'll punch that in real quick. And I got 126.025. Uh, and that makes sense. X is opposite the largest side, so I should get the largest angle. Um, y is opposite the smallest angle, so I had the smallest side length for Y. Uh, something else uh, I, you need to notice is when I punch this inverse sign in the calculator, remember I stored an answer for A. And since I stored the answer for A, I was able to... Uh, just punch A in the calculator, and it gives you a better answer than using that rounded decimal. So uh, there you go. That's the law of cosines. Once you get that initial side length or angle, then you can go into the law of sines if you choose. You also could do law of cosines to finish out this triangle if you would have liked to.